Welcome to my channel, Reading Radical Feminism. Welcome back, hopefully. Hopefully this is not the first video you're listening to. <laughs> but if it is, I'd say this is a great introduction to Mary Daly. It's a great book. This is a great little chapter, a short one. So I'll get started. Let's see. The Second Passage, The Sado Ritual Syndrome, The Reenactment of Goddess Murder. Begin quote, Tiamat and Marduk, the wisest of the gods, advanced against one another. They pressed on to single combat, they approached for battle. The Lord spread out his net and enmeshed her, the evil wind following after, he let loose in her face. When Tiamat opened her mouth to devour him, he drove in the evil wind, in order that she should not be able to close her lips. The raging winds filled her belly, her belly became distended, and she opened wide her mouth. He shot off an arrow, and it tore her interior, it cut through her inward parts, it split her heart. When he had subdued her, he destroyed her life, he cast down her carcass and stood upon it. After he had slain Tiamat, the leader, her band broke up, her host dispersed. The Lord trod upon the hinder part of Tiamat, and with his unsparing club he split her skull. He cut the arteries of her blood, and caused the north wind to carry it to out-of-the-way places. When his fathers saw this, they were glad and rejoiced. The Lord rested, examining her dead body, end quote, from Emma Ailish, The Babylonian Genesis. Begin quote, The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Ghost. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Ugh. Ew! <laughs> The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Ghost. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. End quote. From the Angelus. Begin quote. When I realized that they had made the goddess into Mary and that the Annunciation scene was a depiction of the rape of the goddess, I remembered that as a little girl I had been taught to recite, quote, the Angelus three times a day. I was horrified to realize that I had been taught to recite the rape of the goddess and to cooperate in the mutilation and killing of my own self-image of myself, end quote. Linda Barufaldi, these scholars. Begin quote. Translating ignorance into Latin and Greek, how easy to be king when all your subjects are dead. Drone, drone, drone your dreary dithy rams, you stillborn celibate intellects, you fools, you frauds, you accumulated postules of useless learning. The curse of the makers upon you, end quote. Whew. <laughs> I love that. Um, Rita Mae Brown from the Necropolis in The Hand That Cradles the Rock. Prelude to the Second Passage. The myth masters are able to penetrate their victims' minds slash imaginations only by seeing to it that their deceptive myths are acted out over and over again in performances that draw the participants into emotional complicity. Such reenactment trains both victims and victimizers to perform uncritically their preordained roles. Thus, the psyches of the performers are conditioned so that they become carriers and perpetrators of patriarchal myths. In giving the myth reality by acting it out, the participants become reproducers and, quote, living proof, end quote, of the deceptive myths. 
The scene is set for the ritual delegitimation and destruction of the being of female identified furious women. The idea that religious myth is embedded in ritual is common among sociologists, particularly those influenced by Durkheim. The use of the term embed, E-M-B-E-D, embed, should be thought-provoking for anyone aware of the use of subliminal embeds in modern films, music, television, and printed media. The viciously exploitative technological embedding that infiltrates the modern psyche from all sides impresses the mind on levels beyond conscious awareness, profoundly affecting beliefs and behaviors. This sophisticated technological embedding has its antecedent in religious ritual, which repeatedly rapes, kills, and dismembers women. Nietzsche captured the essence of patriarchal ritual when he posed the question of how one can, quote, create a memory for the human animal, end quote. The problem and solution, according to that philosopher, are as follows. Begin, quote, how does one go about to impress anything on that partly dull, partly flighty human intelligence, that incarnation of forgetfulness so as to make it stick? Inner quote, a thing is branded on the memory to make it stay there. Only what goes on hurting will stick and inner quote. This is one of the oldest and unfortunately one of the most enduring psychological axioms. Whenever man has thought it necessary to create a memory for himself, his effort has been attended with torture, blood, and sacrifice, end quote. The use of such terms as impress and brand is significant. To impress is defined as, quote, to apply with pressure so as to imprint, end quote. The term brand is derived from a Middle English term meaning torch or sword. The message is clear. The, quote, thing that is impressed slash branded on the memory is forced into the mind by some violent and painful means, by pressing slash cutting slash invading. Such memory creating is indeed, as Nietzsche said, quote, attended with torture, blood, and sacrifice, end quote. This is the mind rape that accompanies male myth creation. It is not done only on a one-to-one -one basis, of course, but is inflicted by the representatives of patriarchy upon vulnerable individual women. That is, it is gang rape. Moreover, it is done over and over again. It is important for hags to ask just what sort of, quote, memory is being, quote, created and what is the purpose of this, quote, memory. Moreover, why should it be necessary to, quote, create a, quote, memory by mind slash spirit rape? Patriarchal myth itself provides us with basic clues. It is replete with stories of a primordial genocidal, quote, divine act. For example, in the Babylonian creation myth, the Enuma Elish, the god Marduk slays a marine monster, the goddess Tiamat, and dismembers her body, splitting it in two in order to create the cosmos. Eliade unwittingly elucidates the oppressive function of the rituals which recreate and reinforce this primordial act. He writes that for all paleo-agricultural peoples, quote, what is essential is periodically to evoke the primordial event that established the present condition of humanity, read gynocidal patriarchy, end quote. The following passage illustrates the ritual perpetuation of goddess murder, begin quote, the true sin is forgetting. The girl who at her first menstruation spends three days in a dark hut without speaking to anyone does so because the murdered, brackets divine, maiden, having become the moon, remains three days in darkness. If the menstruating girl breaks the taboo of silence and speaks, she is guilty of forgetting a primordial event, end quote. Um, 
As Denise Connors has pointed out, this primordial event is the murder-slash-dismemberment of the goddess, that is, the self-affirming being of woman. It might seem confusing that in patriarchy, quote, the true sin is forgetting, end quote, this deed, since its ideologies deny that there ever was, is, or can be female divinity, whose existence would be a prerequisite condition for her murder. However, since the father's ritual is the realm of reversals, such confusion should be expected. The purpose of such contrived confusion is to prevent us from committing the, quote, true sin against patriarchal rule slash ritual, that is, remembering that as long as we are alive, the goddess still lives. Amen. The radical, quote, sin is remembering, remembering the goddess in the full sense, that is, recognizing that the attempt to murder her mythically and existentially is radically wrong, and demonstrating through our own being that this deed is not final slash irrevocable. The deed can be revoked by re-invoking the goddess within, which involves, quote, forgetting to kill female divinity that is ourselves. Continual complicity in the crime of goddess killing is mandatory in the man's world. Our refusal to collaborate in this killing and dismembering of our own selves is the beginning of remembering the goddess, the deep source of creative integrity in women. In the following pages, I will analyze a number of barbarous rituals, ancient and modern, in order to unmask the very real existential meaning of goddess murder in the concrete lives of women. I will focus upon five specific righteous rites which massacre women, Indian sooty, Chinese foot binding, African female genital mutilation, European witch burning, and American gynecology. In examining these, I will speak out basic patterns which they have in common and which comprise the Sado ritual syndrome. Those who claim to see racism and or imperialism in my indictment of these atrocities can do so only by blinding themselves to the fact that the oppression of women knows no ethnic, national, or religious bounds. There are variations on the theme of oppression, but the phenomenon is planetary. My analysis of Sado rituals will include an unmasking of deceptive legitimations by scholars and, quote, authorities. The scholars of patriarchy, despite protestations to the contrary, embrace and perpetuate the same higher order as the ritual performers slash destroyers they are studying. Although they rarely publicly admit to this basic fraternity, it is evident in their own words. Understanding this aspect of the Sado ritual syndrome is essential to understanding the universal sameness of phallocratic morality. The fact that patriarchal scholarship is an extension and continuation of Sado ritual is manifested, often unwittingly and witlessly, by its language. This language betrays, or rather, loyally and faithfully displays, the fact that the quote, authorities are apologists for atrocities. It is an essential task of feminist metaethics to examine and analyze this language, untangling the snarls of sentence structure, unveiling deceptive words, exposing the bag of semantic tricks intended to entrap women. This passage is the most somber part of the journey. Having uncovered the patterns of patriarchal myth, the Voyager must now discover the global dimensions of its gynocidal reenactments. As she moves through this passage, she finds multiple manifestations of the lethal intent of patriarchy. Her increasing knowing of this intent and her facing its implications is radical exorcism.
This knowing requires acknowledging the interconnectedness of the ritual atrocities, refusing to compartmentalize facts into stale and irrelevant, quote, bodies of knowledge, end quote. Despite and because of the terrors and tragedies that must be faced in this part of the journey, the voyager senses a growing integrity of vision and purpose. As a consequence of her courage to see, she finds the focus of her anger so that it fuels and no longer blocks her passion and creativity. Mm. Thus, this exercising passage gives her the right of passage into the other world, the world of her own inspiriting, sparking, spinning ecstasy. Mm -mm -mm. If you enjoyed this reading, please like and subscribe. If you have not listened to other readings with this one, please do. This book is amazing. And otherwise, stay tuned for chapter three.